Hello, everybody. And I did it again. I forgot to turn the cotton blooming thing off. So let me do that real quick. Do, do, do. Turn that off. Come in a little closer. All right. I think that'll do it. So hello, everybody. Hi, Holly, Mina, Angie, um, Kendra, and Clint's Paper Crafting and Crafting Ideas. Hello. Are you Shell's Clint or another Clint? Um, I had put the link to these little ponies. These are not mine. They are from a lady called Ann Wood. They are a free to print off her blog. So you have to go to her blog to get these for your personal use. And um, I saw these on Kate, um, the last homely house. You're another Clint. Okay, well, welcome. Anyway, um, the last homely house, Kate, she had... She has these suitcases and periodically she'll pull a suitcase out and she'll say, let's see what's in this suitcase. Well, she used to have a store, a storefront of her own, and she had these little ponies that she'd gotten off from Ann's um, blog. And she did a pony a day for 100 days and she would have a little uh, marquee at the front of her shop and she'd say, today's pony is and then she'd give each of them had a name this was my first pony that i did on the 18th the day i saw her her ponies and i named this one autumn because i did it on a i did it out of a piece of um paper that i had done a background on and so this was my first pony and i did not include the mane um that comes on them i cut that away and the tail and this is just trim from my stash. But I think he turned out pretty cute. So this is Autumn. And what I've done and what y'all can do is I went through my painty paper and I just glued painty, a piece of painty paper to a piece of cardboard from the cat food. And so if you do this, I would highly recommend what I did is I printed off on sticker paper and then mounted that to the same cardboard to make templates that I can reuse and reuse and reuse. But I used sticky back paper. So all I had to do was peel it out off and stick it on the cardboard and then cut it out. But when you go to do these, don't just put this down and trace around it and then put the legs on and stuff. Try to figure out your spacing for all of the legs and everything before you start tracing anything. Ask me how I know um, because I cut some out and it didn't work out so well for me because um, I ended up with not enough to get all the legs. So I put the legs down. And that's my calico cat that's decided now is when she needs to come in. So hang on just a sec. All right, come on. You could have come in before I started, okay? There you go. Five seconds, she'll want back out. It's a hurting cat hour. So I've already traced out horse one, horse two, horse three, and then I made horse four and I just cut the tail and the mane off so I could use trim on this horse. So this is basically the third horse, if I remember right. Yeah, the third horse without its mane and tail. Just so I could have one that I could just put the um, trim on it for its tail and mane. So what I do is I just hold it down with my hand and take a pen and just trace around it. And on Ann's site, and Kate did the same thing as Ann did, and when they attached the legs, they used uh, wire 
and um, some buttons. But I wanted to do it a little faster than that, so I just used brads. Since I have all these brads in my stash that need to be used up, um, I've even included boxes of brads in some of the, the purge boxes, which I still have some here. If anybody wants a purge box, $25 medium flat freight. And it's just random stuff to play with. Um, I still have people's names on a list. Um, and I've been sending them out as soon as the pay hits the PayPal. So there's that. So now I'm going to do this leg. And once you trace around it, you could probably move the template. But I don't think it's in my way any. I'm just holding it in place so I can trim around it. I guess you could use masking tape to kind of mask it down. But this is, this works for me. Give me just a second. Just two more legs to go. We'll have them all traced on here. Um, I might hold the other one until we get these, these three put together. And then we'll see what time it is. Because I've already done one with, you know, with the trim. That was the one I did the other day. So I wanted to do three. I don't know if I'll make a hundred like Kate did, but... It could be fun to try to make a hundred of these. And she had them on the wall in her shop and they looked really cool. She had pictures of from inside her old shop there in Northern England. And you're just using little bits of um, pieces and stuff. Hi, Suze. That's fine, Susan. I got your name on one. Don't worry about it. Hi, Lisa. Uh, Janet. Hey, Janet. Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl, your box went today. Thanks, Janet. All right, so let's do horse three here. And I'm just going to take the pattern pieces off because I don't need them anymore. And I'm just going to cut him out. I know, killer scissors to do fussy cutting, huh? Oh, well. You, um, over the next uh, probably three to six weeks, I'm probably not going to do as many art videos because I'm going to box up all my art supplies and get them moved down to the house. And I'm just going to keep my sewing machine and that kind of stuff here. So you'll probably see some sewing videos pop up. I don't know if I'll do a live. Um, a live sewing session or not. All right. So I'm going to match this up because these are labeled. Um. I don't remember. I think this was the back leg. Yeah. This is the back back leg, meaning it goes behind the body. So it won't matter that this is not printed because you're not going to see it anyway. So that's the back back leg. The back back leg. Yeah. And I thought I had done all of this down here so I wouldn't have any of this um, where it was patched. I should have paid more attention. That'll show me probably not even in screen. All I'm doing is cutting it out. It's, it's not rocket science or anything difficult.
this cardboard is a little soft from the glue, which kind of helps in a way. All right, so this has got to be the front, front leg. I think. No, that's this one. Front, back. Front, back. And back, back. Okay. It'll make sense once I um, <laughs> start putting it together, what I mean about front, front, back, back, and front, back, and all of that. It, it, believe me, it'll make sense. I promise it's going to make sense. But if I hadn't marked them that it was the front leg, the front, front leg, the front, back leg, the back, front leg, and the back, back leg, I wouldn't know where to put the legs. I'm sure I could figure it out. Maybe I will switch to fussy cut scissors just so you guys can see. Hi, Candy. Hi, Janice. Hi, Patricia. But when Kate showed those ponies, I was like, oh, I know my crew would love to make some ponies. So, and I thought how cute these would be for a little girl, well, even a little boy's birthday party. Anybody that likes horses, you could put their initial or their name on it and do a pony with each or put a little saddle on it or saddle blanket with the child's name written out in ponies. I thought that would be a really cute party thing. Banner. That's what the, that's the word I was thinking of banner. Violet said she was hoping she'd get wrapped up with work so she could come play. So I don't, I need to check and see who all's come in. And of course, the cat is back at the door, you guys. Callie, just go lay down, honey. Scott got the special um, zip ties to install the wire on the porch. Yes, dear. It's not all about you. No, it's not. She's probably thinking it should be. I'm the most beautiful cat of the bunch. Or so she thinks. Callie, are you a beauty queen? She is not one that to want to be held unless it's on her terms. Typical calico cat attitude out the wazoo she's just a little diva aren't you you a diva I don't know if you want to sit and watch me cut out ponies all night or not. but And I'm not sure how long I'll last. We'll see. For some reason, I've been getting up obnoxiously early, which means I can catch Mary, but it means I'm not sleeping too hot. wonder why. Huh? Huh? Well, the fiasco at that lab, I've got to repeat because they're the only ones that do. Ah! That was sharp. The points are very sharp. Um, they're the only labs that do all of the lab work that the insurance company wants. So I've got to go and have it all done. But this time I made the appointment for 8.30 in the morning. So I'm the first appointment. So if I get there at 8 o'clock, hopefully they'll let me get signed in, take my blood, let me go. <laughs> All right, so here's the body of the pony. I'm not going to worry with matching that now. And I know this is a front back leg, which means it goes behind the pony. And this is the back back leg. 
goes behind the pony like so. So now we need to cut the other legs out. Um, front, 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 back. All right, there we go. Got two more legs to cut out. Oh, what's up with Mary? Don't worry about correcting it, Mary. We will understand it. Just, just be here and relax. Don't be your own grammar police. Believe me, some of the things I type in and y'all figure it out. I'm not going to, I'm not going to grade you. Now, I was just going to pitch any scraps, but I have another little scrap here, and this matches that scrap, and I might need it. So I'm going to keep the scraps from this, because I was thinking I might try to make another animal on my own, and that would give me some more little bits to go with that. So we'll see how I do. Oh, hang on. Now look, Missy, hey, Callie, I'm not opening another can. No, come on, come on. She's gonna stamp her paw at me. Now look, I want you to open another can. I'm not gonna do it. Come on, why don't you go outside? Quit being obnoxious. Come on, go outside. I'm not opening another one. Sorry. Boy, she looks mad. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so this is the other back leg, which will go on the pony like that. Wow, what was that? Oh, it's that, that guy with that great big pickup truck that he loads down with too much stuff. <laughs> All right. Now, I've, I'm thinking regular hole punch would do it, but I've got um, the big honking hole punch here. And like I said, I did not do the wire and button routine because I have so many of these um, brads I need to use up. So that is horse number three there. She has three, three different um, horses. They got different manes and tails and their legs are positioned a little and their Heads are shaped a little different. So you look like you've got a whole herd by the time you do about a hundred of these. What has two sizes, Beck? All right. So now let's put their legs on. And what I do is I just try to make it look like they're like right across from each other. One on the back, one on the front. And you don't have to be perfect. And then just punch a little hole. Yeah. I'm just saying big honking thing because it's heavy. And then I'm going to use... I think on this one, let's see, what kind of bread do we want to use? Hmm? No, I've got these. I think a black one would be prettiest on this. Let's get a black one out. But they used buttons and um, they had two buttons, one on each side and then they would run a, a wire in between. Um, but I didn't want to do that. I said, I've got brads. I'm just going to use them. 
just like that, and then their legs will move. So your horsey can be galloping. All right, so this goes behind. Like so. See if I can get my hands to to do. And these could be fun for a child to do too. If you did the tracing and had them cut them out, I don't know. Too young a child, they might be look like little clumps, but it would give them practice. So now you've got your pony, but. You want to give him an eye and a nostril and where his mouth is and then do his hooves. And I did these with paint because I had painted this um, and it was real textured. But that was my first pony. And that's the one that's kind of like this one where I cut the mane and the tail off. He's got a crop racing tail there. <laughs> so I'm going to set that over there. Um, let me see if I could do this with a marker. Let's see if we can do his hooves with a marker. to come up just a little bit more. I hope that's not one of my cats across the street getting barked at. I'll be kind of glad when they're penned up <laughs> and not able to go everywhere. Now their eyes, they have like a little round like that and then I need a, a smaller piece and then their nostrils look like peanuts. Let me see if I can find a fine tip marker. Give me just a sec. I thought I was prepared, but apparently I'm not. But I know I can. Oh, over here. I was get a new one out. I think I'm gonna do. Oh, and then we could do his, his mane and his tail. Hi, Barbara Clark. We could do, give his mane some color. Just make it all black. And I think she has some other things. It, it's Ann Wood Handmade. And she has some other crafts on her site. Y'all might want to check her out while, you know, look around while you're there getting the pattern. I'm sure she'd appreciate the, the visits.
maybe give them because they do have some hair that comes across on their faces. we go. So what should we name this pony? What do y'all think his name should be? Hi, Linda T. I'm in the zone. What is what does Dawn want? What you want, Dawn? Hi, Dawn. <laughs> I don't hate you. I just, I get in the zone and then I'm out. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Kathy, I love your water pool, your water pond with the waterfalls. That would just be so relaxing to just sit out there and listen to that and watch the fish. Enjoy your vodka, Dawn. <laughs> Dawn said she was going to get her a drink. Oh, you got some wine? Okay. Bye, Dawn. I had fun watching you put your junk journal together. Hi, Joyce. Cheryl, I have no clue what the ponies are going to be used for. I just thought they'd be fun to make. Let's name this pony Dawn. This will be Dawn. Dawn will be pony number two. And then today is August. No, it's not August. It's September. Good grief. It's September 23rd. 2020. And then I'll put my initials on his head. R-A-M. So that's the Dawn Pony. So Dawn and Autumn. They can run off together. Yeah, I don't have a clue for the ponies. They could be fun. Just put up on the wall for a little while. There goes Dawn. Brum, 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 brum. And that pony turns out smaller. That one turned out a lot smaller than my first one. But that I guess it's just Dawn's a younger pony. That's it. All right. So now we've got this one. Back, back. Front, back. Front, front. Back, front. And the body. Well, we've missed you too, Linda. I was wondering where you were. Fun for its own sake. That's right. Now, see, this pony is a lot bigger. That little pony I just did only took that much of the cardboard. And this one takes a lot more. That's why I say when you're laying these out to cut them out, go ahead and make sure they'll all fit before you start um, tracing around them and um, cutting them out because that's what I found before. Now, which this is just a piece of my drop paper, so who knows what this pony will look like? This is some old brown drop paper that was in my my um, paper bin bucket. There's Lisa. I think I said hi to Lisa. I saw Do um, Tanya had put a video up. I think it was her. What is it? What is she calling that one? Um, something about her table. I guess she she clears her table when she does those. I've just created a mess behind me to get my table clear tonight, you guys. I um, 
what was it day before yesterday or was it i don't even remember it that hot dog that we got out made me so sick i i just told scott i said i don't i don't want to eat out anymore at all ever everything's gotten so horrible and i don't we don't even go in we go through the drive through but half the time they don't get the order right and it doesn't matter where you go it you could be at like mcdonald's they'd mess it up so i just i don't even want to buy anything out which mcdonald's is off our list anyway But we like the salads at Wendy's, and they just messed the order all up the other day. So to last night, I got to feeling, it was yesterday, because last night I got to feeling better, and I just cooked up so much stuff. I made um, meatballs from scratch. They were really good. Now, if you want your horse to run the opposite way, you know, all you have to do is put all your patterns pattern pieces upside down on the cardboard. So say that you want them going the opposite way and this horse was going this way. All you'd have to do is do this and the horse would be going that way. For anybody that didn't realize that. All right. So this is probably the horse's back back. Yes. So this is a back back leg. Um, even my Panera has gotten bad. Um, the last couple times I've gone, I was very disappointed. Panera used to be like one of my favorite places to go when I was traveling and doing, helping with remodels in stores. Um, and it would be like one of those places. It's like a guaranteed you'd get it, you know, a decent meal while traveling and, the one here now, it's just gotten horrible. And it used to be one of my favorite places. So disappointing. So these horses, apparently you get different sizes. So your herd will be all different sizes. So some could be, you could say some are stallions, some are, some are mares, some are colts, some are <laughs> I love, which is not good for me, but I love the loaded potato soup there, or did. Um, and they had a, the bread that has the um, tomato in it is so good. I can't remember what it's called. It comes on the veggie sandwich. And I'm not keeping this stuff. Now, this has got to be a front leg. No, this is the front back leg. Yeah, so this is the back leg. Is that right? No, front back leg. So this goes at the front of the horse. This is the back of the horse. I don't have any... This is the back. This is the front. Okay. I'll get this horse figured out. Oh, that sounds... We have so many Hispanic restaurants. Um, I kind of live in a Hispanic community here. And um, our favorite place, the owner had to... He put some family member in charge and the place has gone downhill since then. When we first moved up, everything was so fresh and delicious. And then this relative's kind of just running it into the ground. I feel so bad for them. But he decided he could make more money um, doing construction than he could running the restaurant. So he put this um, relative in there and it's so sad to see it going, you know, badly.
there's a Costa Rican restaurant not too far from us. And we tried that one time, but that was just, it was just too bland for us. We like hot and spicy stuff. Most people don't like the things that we like to, to order. I'm just going to cut these into different pieces, maybe. And I would not worry about cutting out exactly on the line because each time you cut out, it'll be slightly different anyway. So, but these ponies are just so stinking cute when you get them all cut out, put together. You made chicken noodle. Um, it's on my list of things to make this week. I might make it over the weekend. It's turned slightly cooler here, which has been nice. Scott turned the furnace on for the first time uh, yesterday morning. And you know when fuel oil sets and then that first time you turn it on, I thought I was going to lose my non-breakfast because it just gave off the worst odor from all that stale fuel oil that had sat on the pan, you know, all summer. Let's see, can I get in here? This is going to be one weird pony because this came from the drop paper. And I'm not keeping these little bits. There's, they're not enough to save. And I'm using leftover bits and recycled cardboard. These could be fun to mail to my nieces. They might like them. Get a little pony in the mail from Aunt Becky. Maybe put a magnet on the back so they could put it on the refrigerator. I might could do that. I might make them their own ponies. And then put each one in its own envelope, mail them separate so they all get their own little mail. That's a big thing for kids to get their own mail. They like it. It's kind of a rarity for, you know, regular mail. I don't know if even our, if, has anybody else noticed that their mail is not going every day? Because I have not, I have yet to see a mail truck drive by this house. Of course, we were gone for a little time, but the other day she didn't come by until, went down the road, not until 530. And then she didn't come back by here until like 615. So I don't know what the deal is. I think the mail delivery is getting worse and worse. They need to give them back their sorting machines. That's like taking the guns away from the police. That's all I could think of. The postal service is not a for-profit business. That was not a thing until 2000, what was it, 2005 or 2006. The postal service is supposed to be like your fire department and your police department. So imagine if somebody came in and took the fire truck away from the firemen. That's basically what's happened. All right. There's. The I think I can put this pony together without. I'm going to set the pattern aside. We've got two legs left. Oh, goodness, you got a golden retriever there. Hey, Norma. Hi, Ray. Yep, I'm getting very little, um, and I'm lucky if I get anything in the mail. And Scott, he ordered something that was supposed to be here in three days, and it took a week and a half to come from Michigan. I've also noticed it depends on where it's coming from, you know, the delivery times. Like I got, um, I ordered some fabric from Fabric Mart, which I didn't really need any more fabric, but they had a cotton bundle, mystery bundle for $18. I'll show that to you guys in a little bit if you'd like to see what I got for the $18. Six yards of fabric for $18. It's all cottons too, so I'll use them. Um, 
But it it was here in less than a week from PA. All right, so this should be a front leg. And see, I'm that pony doesn't have um, anything right there, but I think I'm going to leave it. I think it adds to him. Let's see. We can get rid of these. Cat Hand has put up a nat nature journal. And then Lindsay, the frugal crafter, is doing a premiere in 30 minutes on a fall watercolor of pumpkins and oak leaves and acorns. All right, I'll do that. We'll take an interim from the ponies after I finish this one, and I'll show you the fabric. I had thought about us just getting together and, um, you know, painting a background and making the pony from that background, but I just didn't feel like making a mess tonight. So I said, you know, I've got painty paper and I've got cardboard. I'll just use that. I have the box of Sharpie brush tips, I think, or I think that's what they're called. We could add some decorations to him if we wanted to, but I think he's kind of cute just like that. I might put his eye on with a white gel pen. Let's put his, let's get his legs on here. Dawn cracks me up. She doesn't like me. She didn't say hi to me. Dawn needs to come more often to know that I get in the zone and then it's all over with. All right. I'm going to use just some of these that I've got like a million of them. The gold. Ooh, we could give him a gold mane. Let me get a gold... Um, Give him a gold mane and tail and hooves and an eyeball and all in gold. I guess I should. Let's put this guy on here. Put that one there. It's kind of hard to figure out where to go here to. Uh-oh, why won't it do? Man, that, that's a lot to go through, I guess. I kind of like that his tail has the uh, honeycomb on it, though. Maybe I'll just do some swirls for his, instead of coloring it in, just do a little swirl of something. Aren't these cute? Let me get that gold pen out. Oh, you know what? It's right here beside me. Right here. Teresa, I'll print a copy off and send it to you. Since you can't print them.
my paper's not totally glued down apparently right there. All right. And maybe if I just do some wispy lines on his tail here and there. I ought to send Dawn, Dawn, send it in an envelope to her and say, since you said I didn't say hello, here's a pony. <laughs> okay. And we'll just give him a little round eye and then give him kind of an eyebrow. Shaped like a peanut. This horse is smiling. His eye looks creepy. Here. That's the good thing about gel pens. If you go in quick enough, <laughs> you can just wipe it off. I think I'll do that with black. They know. Mina, they know. <laughs> they say, ah, Mina's fixing to watch somebody. We better call her. This is a brand new marker and it's acting so weird. There must be something on the paper. I don't know. The more I try to fix it, the worse it gets. Go in quick. Make it go away. Okay. That's better. He looks like he's ticked off, but it's okay. There's another little pony of sorts. I'm going to name this one Mystic. So, this will be Mystic. My initials on his head. It's 923-2020. I think that's all I was putting on the back, wasn't it? This is pony number three. Pony number three. All right. So see, they are different sizes. Look at that. And then if you do the trim mains, you get a whole different look. You guys can't hardly see them for the background. Let me, here, let's put them on a green field. So you can see the ponies while I go grab that package of fabric. All 
Aren't they cute? It's usually my son is the only one that calls me. My mom is too tired to, to call me anymore. <laughs> Let me get that bag. I'm just going to wash my hands really quick because I do have some ink on them. I think my, that might be my last pony for tonight, and we'll do something else. How about that? All right. But aren't they cute? And um, if you, the link for the pattern to make them um, is in the description box below the video, and it'll be there. So you guys can go and, and um, get the pattern and make your own ponies. And these are just made with scraps of painty paper I had. So I did have one more traced out, but I'm just going to set them aside for now. And uh, we'll do something else. All right. So the fabric I got um, was $18. And then their shipping is like $9.95, no matter how much you order so it's better to wait until you're going to put in a really big order with them because then it would only be $9.95 but I bought this bundle which was the six yard cotton bundle and they do these bundles up um, periodically and they'll just be random and this is at fabricmart.com and I ordered another one of designer fabrics six yards of designer fabrics that can be up to a several hundred dollars worth of fabric for $24 and it's six yards. So they go through their, the, like their ends of bolts and that kind of stuff, or they're, if they're trying to clear out something and they make these bundles up and depending on what they are, they have another one that's all silk. You can get a whole silk bundle, but it's a little bit pricier. And I don't, I don't think I'd use the silk I might if I was doing crazy quilting like crazy, but I'm not right now. I'm going to back out a little bit because we're in kind of close. All right. Thanks, Janet. So let's set it aside. The first one here is it looks like a seersucker. Um, there's 1.2 yards. So it's a little over a yard, but if I remember right, these are like 50 inches wide. So I could get a top out of this here. Um, and I thought it was really a pretty, it's um, beige and a kind of a cream color. Make sure there's nothing on here that'll get it dirty. And then the next one, at first I thought it was black, but this is brown. So they actually made everything in this pack actually kind of goes together. So I could make, you know, maybe a something with the last fabric that I could wear a top made out of each of these. But this is a real kind of pretty leafy print. It's kind of a thin fabric. I mean, I can pretty much see right straight through that. But it would make a shirt and I could wear, I could put a camisole underneath it. And this was 2.69. So it's not quite two and three quarter yards. Um, this is a 2008 pattern from Cameron Industries. I didn't know if there was a name somewhere else on it or not. I don't see anything. So those two, they really kind of go together. 
And then the biggest piece is two and three eighths yards. And it's a real pretty, it's got texture. I'm sure you guys can see the, the texture to it. And two and three eighths yards, I could make a pair of pants out of these. I am not one to wear white or cream colored pants. So that's the thing. Um, and then I got to thinking, what if I made a jumper that I could wear over? Now for me in the USA, when I say jumper, I mean like a bib overall type dress thing. And I thought that could be pretty and that would help um, combat the see-throughness of this brown and cream, or brown and white or whatever it is. But I think they all kind of go together. So I need to look through my patterns and find something that would use that much fabric up and make make an, a dress or um, bib overalls or something, you know, out of the cream that I could make shirts out of these two and they would match. So that was my cotton bundle from Fabric, fabric Mart. And I can't wait to get the designer fabric and see what they include with that. Now, I I watched these sisters that they each order a bundle and then they compare them. And right now, since they can't go shopping together, um, they have been doing, one's name is Dory and the other's name is, starts with a D too, but I can't remember. They're, if I can remember to do it, I will put a link to their channel. They are a lot of fun to watch and talk about what they make. And they both have such different tastes, but they are so fun to watch. And I think it's so cute that they, um, they compare stuff. And one sister will say, Oh, I want that. She says, I'll send you a piece if there's any left. What about an instructor jacket? I'm not sure what that is, Linda. So that's what I got in my mystery bundle from Fabric Mart, since I'm not going shopping in the stores right now. I'm going to set this back over here. But well, y'all know I went through the um, storage unit as I was going along and I came across the fabric that I want to make myself a robe. So like I said, the next couple weeks, it's going to be all about sewing with me. So bear with me. I'll get back to the art stuff eventually. But um, look, I'm going to make my robe out of this. I bought this when I worked at Joann's. Isn't it beautiful? And of course, I got my employee discount and all of that. So this is the first thing I'm going to make because it's been chilly enough that um, I've needed a robe. Let's see the date on this because it's back from when I worked there. Let's see if I can find the date on it. Mm -hmm. I don't see a date anywhere. I'm wanting to say it was like 2005 or something. Oh, it's so luscious and warm. <laughs> I can't wait to get the robe made. I mean, now that I know that the sewing patterns are made for people five foot five and under, <laughs> or like the five two to five five is what they're made, and I'm five seven, so that's why. Blouses have always have come up a little short for me. So I know that I immediately I need to lengthen the, the waistline in the blouses. This is going to be my robe. And um, I have, I have tubs of fabric and one one is a tub of nothing but flannel cat fabric. Shh. Don't tell Scott. It's at the house already, though. And I did get fabric in to make um, Hawaiian shirts for Greg for Christmas. I'll show you that. 
this is becoming a fabric fabric haul but greg said he's into black and blue so i got this i've already pre-washed it but isn't this blues pretty he said a dark blue and this was looked pretty dark on the website this came from hawaii um, Fabric Mart of Hawaii. They actually have a separate one there. And then this one was just a nice black print. So I'm going to make him a couple button up shirts. He loves, um, oh, now I can't remember that author's name. Johnny Depp played him in a movie. Hunter S. Thompson. So I'm going to make him two shirts. What else can I show you guys? You want to see progress on the corner-to-corner -corner afghan? That I have been working on, too. Hang on. I don't want to drop my hook out. Okay, I'm currently working that skein. Let me pull up a loop so I don't lose my place. And then I'm going to lift you guys up so I can hold it up. I'm on the reduction end of it. You work from one corner back to the other, and when you get halfway where you want to be, you start decreasing stitches. So by the time you get to the other corner, you're making another point. Blast from the past, Kathy. All right. So... Here is the afghan. I had to wait for it to get cool because it's gotten so big. <laughs> but this is the afghan so far. <coughs> and you can see kind of right here is another corner. And I've started the reduction. So it'll be a big square afghan. And this is all thrifted yarns in blues and greens. Thanks, guys. And um, I posted a pattern. You can see my mess behind me here. There we go. Um, <laughs> I printed off a pattern to do a poncho-like sweater. And I'm going to do it in the wool uh, fabrics, not fabrics, wool yarns that I got thrifting. And this is called Corner to Corner. And I learned about it on Bella Coca um, on her channel. She has some great patterns. And if you're left handed, when she puts a pattern out like this Corner to Corner Afghan, she'll do one video for right handed people. And then she does a second video for left-handed people. So this is called Corner to Corner. And um, it's basically, um, it's hard to describe. If you go to her video, if I can remember, I'll put the link to that video too. So easy to follow instructions too. And it works up so nice. And if you want to, after you get back to your other corner, you can put... Um, you can go around it and add a um, border to it. It's Bella Coca, I believe. So I'm going to put you back down to the table. Sorry about the mess behind me, but I am kind of throwing everything in boxes right now. Whoa. I'll see if I can look it up on my own to make sure I'm telling you the right thing, Lisa. Hang on just a sec. Let me put this back in its basket so I don't lose it. So those are the things I was going to talk about. Oh, the red bird I did with, um, I wanted to show you guys this red bird I did with Beth the other night. It's on marker paper. Didn't he turn out pretty? Let me look. Hang on. Oh, my battery's low. Um, yeah, I hear you. You're low.
Let me plug this phone in because it's about to croak. Oh, I can't plug it in right now. All, all of my plugs are full. I'm glad I'm working all right here. Let me see if I can back out. I'll plug it in the wall after I look this up. Um, subscriptions. Bella, B-E-L-L-A. Oh, Coco, C-O-C-O. -C -O. I had it wrong. So I scanned it. See, it's, it's huge. It barely fit in the scanner. Um, but then I took her took this into GIMP, which is the photo editing thing I have on my computer. And I shrunk it down to where I could get four birds on a paper. And that's how I made the cards. And Janet got one of these cards. So these have been printed off. That's another way you can share your art and not have to do a whole bunch of work over and over. Do one copy like I did this big guy, scan it into your computer, shrink it down and get it to where you can get four on a page. The only thing is I couldn't get my signature all on there, but I know I did it. And I signed the back of the cards. When I send them out, I sign the back of them. And uh, that's a way you can make lots of sets and stuff like Beth had said you could make a set of those yeah I had it's Bella Coco I had it wrong but I like that she um, does that option because I have a friend that's trying to learn to crochet and it really helped her a lot to have somebody show the left hand version of it Barbara says she scans everything she makes from and makes cards from her journal pages. Exactly. And I know, um, is it Cat Hand? No, not Cat Hand. Oh, I can't remember her channel. Oh, she's one of our English ladies. And I, why can't I remember her name right now? What is wrong with my brain? Um, but that's a way to do, uh, uh, cards up for people. And that way they're getting a copy of your original art and you can keep your, when it's obnoxiously large like this, not Janet Nash. Um, oh, she's got real curly hair and she's got the sweetest voice. Oh, why can't I think of her name? Not Betsy Doodle, not our noodle Betsy Doodle. Um, not Janet Nash. Um, let me go look at my phone. Oh, why can't I remember names tonight? Names are escaping me. I'm subscribed to too many people, I think. <laughs> oh. Give me just a sec. Scrolling through. Should have left y'all something to look at.
She makes master boards. Do y'all who know who I'm talking about that makes the master boards? Not Kylie Koo. Um, watch it be somebody at the very end of my list. Oh, I can't remember her name. Nina Ribena. There she is. <laughs> Nina Ribena. It's Nina Ribena. I forgot all about. I had a picture in her in my mind. Yes, Nina Ribena. That's it. I found this in the storage unit too. I had done all of it except I put markers in for buttons, but I don't see any slots left for the buttonholes. But I put all these markers in to put buttons in here. Why did I do that? I didn't make buttonholes. So what I'm thinking is I'll take the markers, or maybe that is the buttonhole. That is the buttonholes. Okay. So it buttons over this way. And I had the, the buttons were all inside it too. So I just need to put these on, and I'll mail this over to my brother's house for my niece's baby. But it was so nice to um, come across this. I was like, man, I could have had a gift right away. So what I'll do is I'll just line this up and yeah, that's where the buttonhole is right there. And the button would go through there, but I'll stitch those on the buttons. So it'll be another gift. Isn't it cute? I was finding all kinds of stuff like this in there and it's like, you know, I need to finish them and then gift them and, have them being put to use. So that's all I've been doing, I think. Just trying to think if I'd done anything along with Mary the other day. This was so much fun. He turned out so cute, too. Well, the only other thing I have is my prompts which we did up to 16, I think, together. And what I did is I've gone back through these and I've added gel pen. So you can see there's some gel pen on these now. So that was the burnt orange. And there's the pumpkin and see that's got some gel pen work on it now. This was cider and the leaf. This is cool weather, which that one I don't particularly care for too much. I thought the donuts turned out pretty good. Susan is here too. So welcome everybody that I haven't said hi to. Hi Journey. And this was, um, what was this one? Yellow, but it looks like it's more orange. So what I did is I put yellow around the edge. And you can't really see it on here. But there's all kinds of doodling on the moon. Hey, rides. Let me come back in closer. I forgot I zoomed out. As Mary says, hold the phone. This morning, it was so funny when Dee Dee went to zoom in, it was like, boom, she's gone. <laughs> and she came back. She hit the wrong button. But I tried to put some, you can kind of see the, the glitter glue, not glitter glue. What's it called? Gel pens. I fixed my stars on there. And then the apple, put some shading in with the gel pen. The sweater, I added gold and some red. My lips for the deep red. That's supposed to be a plum. It kind of looks like a plum.
And there's the wreath, the sweet potato, and plaid. So we can work on these some. And I've already numbered some more cards up to 20. So I need to just write on here what these others are. And 21 says corn stalks. Corn stalks. 22 is just says brown. And 23, which is today, is pine cones. So I might do a couple of these. Let's do soup. And the prompts for this are on Fibsville. Soup. Let's do a bowl of soup. Maybe chicken noodle. You've never referred to yourself in the third person. Hmm. What? What is it? Oh, no, Howie. Not good. Not good, honey. I see. I guess you're waiting for me to say, oh, good boy, but that's a chipmunk. Why'd you kill the chipmunk? I'm not going to let you come in. Oh, poor little chipmunk. He's not monking anymore. <sighs> On a miniature making channel, Bentley House Miniatures, Aira made little painting cards like that. Then she shrunk them on the computer and printed on fabric and paper. Original fabric. Cool. Cats are going to do what cats are going to do. It doesn't mean I have to be happy about it. I'm going to do. Oh, I know. Yes, they are so proud. Oh, so proud. Let's do a bowl gel pen. And I think I'll put it on a plate. And I'll add crackers to the plate. Let's see here. I'm probably only going to do one of these. I don't want to bore y'all watching me draw stuff. I have to be in the mood to draw or it doesn't come out decent. Kathy, I was watching your mister turn that switch and I was like, oh, I hope it works. I hope it works. I hope it works. <laughs> Just put three little crackers there. Yeah, he's out there. He says, Mom, I brought you something. And I'm like, no. I could tell by his meow that something was not good going to happen. Hi, Dallas. He's so excited. He's six. Oh, that's a sweet age. Crafty Kitty's here. Hi.
that uh, red bird that I did with Beth, I pulled out those Arteza markers um, that Scott got me at Christmas and used those. And that marker paper is some I got at the thrift store. I guess an art student had just turned in all the stuff they hadn't used. It's a shame they can't just... Um, get together with the rest of their classmates and, you know, share their money and put, put in and everybody put in and then they buy like a pad of uh, watercolor paper, a pad of um, drawing paper, that kind of stuff. And then everybody get like two pieces of it and, that would cut their cost because then they turn around and they donate all of that to like Goodwill and stuff. I don't know if this will work or not, but let's see. Ooh, that worked good. Use my finger as a tool here. Move that around. starting to get sticky. That's neat. I didn't know you could do that with a gel pen. That is so cool. Move the color around with your finger. Honey, it's already dead. Quit playing with it, please. Cat. If Tippy shows up, Tippy will uh, grab it from Howie and he'll say, Oh, look what I got. It's like, yeah, it takes credit for somebody else's work. Little booger. That works pretty cool. But my fingers are getting all nice and blue. Okay. Susan, does um, Dallas do some art with his grandma? Oh, did uh, Kathy's food arrived? Okay, I'll I'll be here for a little bit longer. Oh, have fun, Barbara. That sounds like so much fun. Let's see. We don't want our soap soup to be black, do we? Let's do. I spread the gold around like I did the, oh, it makes it green. It's gr pea green soup. Turned it green right there. I didn't mean to do that. Then we can make it go. Hot, hot soup. Look at my fingers. <laughs> oh gosh, let's put a little yellow in with the gold. I might have to do like um, Dee Dee and um, get a big pen out. 
It could be pea, pea green soup. Split pea and ham. Haven't had that in years. All right, I'm going to set that aside to dry. That'll be my soup. And then we need our next card, which says bonfire. Um, somebody said, pull out your slow cooker. And I said, I can't. It, it was Cheryl. Um, she said, pull out the slow cooker. And I'm like, I can't. I already took it down to the house. So I'm just gonna Just trying to give myself some guidelines. That one went kind of awry. And let's see what color this is. Ooh, that's too orange. Way too orange. This one. It just never acts right. It's like something's wrong with it. We'll add a little bit of this in here. Yeah, this this time of year I get to craving the um you know all the different soups and stuff. I don't know if this will even look like a bonfire. Like I said, I've got to be in the mood to really draw. Uh, I'm beginning to think I'm not really there. <laughs> Maybe we'll switch over and do some doodling. Um, Dee Dee was sharing a book on doodling this morning. If you haven't watched that, you might want to go back and, and see it. Um, I think the whole takeaway was don't be afraid to get jump in and just doodle i mean i sit here you can see look i doodle while i'm on the phone with people there's a leaf there some lady there a row of boxes i don't know what else is on here that i did myself except something's happening at uh, october 26 at 9 a.m i i don't know i must have made an appointment for something oh i do know I know what that is. That's for um, the furnace yearly checkup at the house. I wanted to make sure the furnace is going to be okay down there. So that kind of looks like a bonfire, but I don't know. Maybe it looks more like the corn stalks. Let's put some rocks around it, I guess. 
It's not a very big bonfire. It looks more like a campfire. That's okay. It can be a campfire. See, I'm drawing these with the gel pens. I'm not even using the, the tips like I did on those first ones. That's what's different. That's what's making it different. Let's step back a minute. Because those other ones, I started with um, these things. That's how I got all the color on. And then I used this for highlights. So I'm going to step back, step back, step back. Because the, the gel pens is not what I did. But I like the cup of soup. It actually turned out pretty good. Oh, corned beef. I want to try this recipe that I found in that old vegetable cookbook. It sounded so weird. I have to try it. They um, parboil a lettuce. A whole head of lettuce. For five minutes. And then you cut and turn it into a bowl. You, you cut the center out of it. And then you mix, you mix the lettuce that you removed from the inside of the let, head of lettuce. And this is lettuce, not cabbage. That's what, yeah, there's Tippy. He took, took the chipmunk away from Howie. Um, sorry. But then you mix the chopped up lettuce that you removed with a can of corned beef hash. And then you make a, you bake it inside the lettuce for a period of time. And then you make a cream sauce to go over it. We have corned beef for um, St. Patrick's Day. And for the, um, we have pork on the new year. But we have corned beef for another, another thing during the year with my, mother-in-law I don't remember what it was for but I know we have it at St. Patrick's Day I've never had cooked lettuce though that's what oh no you got I did not unplug let me plug my cord in. I'm I'm running. You guys are seeing circle of doom, eh? I'm not seeing it here. Let's see if this will help. Let me know if I pop back up, you guys. I see he's dead. All right. Okay, I'm back. I plugged my cable in, but it didn't look like I had gone anywhere. You guys, I'll be right back while they're in eating food. I'm going to take the chipmunk away so I don't have to deal with it again. Double bag it. <laughs> I hate picking up dead animals. It creeps me out. It creeps me out, but I don't want them to eat. I'm sorry, little guy. I'm so All right. Somebody's got a fire burning. It's not cold enough for a fire. Okay. 
that's what I did, Teresa. I still don't like to do it, but it's done. It still creeps me out. Poor little thing. These look weird coming up. I'm going to finish messing this up and then I'm going to do something else. Hi, Beth. When you were messaging me earlier, I was watching Dawn um, at Let's Make a Mess, make a junk journal out of uh, legal sized envelopes. So I was trying to respond, but then I, I'd missed the bell. And I was like, oh, Beth's probably thinking I'm ignoring her, but I wasn't doing it on purpose. Buddy, I took the chipmunk away. It's not there anymore. I took it away. He's going to be so upset. Oh, well. Don't kill the chippy monks. They're cute. Hi, Callie. Come on. He's looking for it. He's like, where's my chipmunk? I left it right here. That looks more like a bonfire. Some of these markers act weird. There, that's my bonfire. Ta da! I did, I, I did the soup and the bonfire. Could almost take this. Make this a different color than the rest of it. Like the plates have some glaze on here. So I hope you guys don't mind seeing some sewing videos coming up. I do have some clips that we took down at the house, but I feel like if I did a video from them, it would be kind of choppy, but I still might do it and maybe add a a note in there that some of it was filmed before we knew we were moving back down there and some of it was after but it shows some progress that we've made the last couple times we've been down there so i feel like i probably ought to share it if you all don't mind a little kind of disjointed video there we go now we need to make the crack the crackers need to be kind of a brownish brownish thing so just a minute tip you guys I took the I took the chippy monk away it's all gone those we're going to say those are crackers they're a little bit darker but I don't really have anything that's close to a cracker color Go back out too. It's gone. Mama did it. Mama took it all away. I might leave these out and let's just doodle. You guys want to just doodle together? What was upside down? The the soup. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a bowl of soup, and that's a bonfire. So that gets me number 17 and number 18 done. So I'm not nearly, I'm not as far behind as I was. But I will finish those later. Let's just doodle a little bit for a little bit of time, and then um, I'm going to get off here. You know what I Oh, I know what we could do. Where's that marker paper? So I'm going to get a piece of marker paper. Yep, I got this at the thrift store for 89 cents. thought that was pretty good. If you really wanted to just doodle for fun, just get you a piece of paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, make it little rectangles or whatever. So it's kind of like a zine, but we're just going to divide it up into little rectangles. And then you can do quick doodles just to loosen up your muscles. You never know. You might like your doodles and want to turn them into just little embellishments that are on just little pieces of paper that you could even scan this in. I'm going to fold this this way. So I have like little twinchies almost here. It's just marker paper is what it's called. Marker paper. It's really thin. It's what I did the red bird with you on. This stuff. This is called marker paper. And it, it, it was so big, I, I had trouble just scanning it because only this much would fit on my scanning bed. You can actually see where it was in the scanner. So I had to really shrink it down to get it to the card size. See, this is the original and this is the card size. So I'm just going to use um, these Crayola Super Tips. And I got this piece of paper. And see, now I've got a, a grid of little boxes. And we'll just start up here and we'll start doodling. Um, just start with basic shapes. Let's, let's do some basic shapes. That's a circle and a triangle. So now we could take, we could give our circle and triangle and some arms. And legs. I'm not giving her any feet yet because we're going to put some little red shoes on. That's just a circle and another circle. And on this one, you could give her a heel, a smaller circle. We'll paint her dress red to match her shoes. Just go over the, the red that you used to draw the circle and the triangle. You can change the colors as you go along, too. And let's make her a little blonde girl. Might turn her hair orange, mix it with the red. She'll be like Peppermint Patty. See there, I could, that way 
I don't have to. These, these blend really well, you guys. I am so shocked at how well these super tips blend. That is so cool. Let's see. Is this the same color I use? Yeah. Let's. I'm just going to color her face in with this kind of a tannish brown. And then this is as close as I get to little red lips here. Okay. All right. So now we've got the color down. Dee was talking about these um, big crystal, crystal or crystal extra. These are extra bold. Um, that she likes to use these to just sketch with and and um, go back in and add things. So you could do that on here. We could maybe give her a neckline here. Bring out her dress a little bit. Maybe give her a pocket on her dress. And it's doodling. It's not supposed to be drawing. It's doodling. So you'll have little lines that go maybe astray. You could make it look like she's got treads on her shoes. Maybe these are some kind of weird new sneaker that's going to come on the market. Get some highlight spots. Then we can maybe just outline her arms a little bit. Give her a little eye shape, so a little turned up nose are always cute on little doodles. Oop, her mouth has gotten huge. But we're not going to worry about it. Just give her some little curly bits here and there. All right, so there's a doodle. A doodly doot doot do. Um... I'm not going to make this a story because I'm not good at stories like Mary is. I don't really have. Break down things into circles and ovals. And then fill in between. We have a cat. Doesn't look like much there. Or if you don't want to doodle with the super tips, you could go and doodle with the mark with a, just the pen, like like Dee Dee does. Where's my line here? And just do a mushroom. Maybe do another one that's a different shape. Some 
sprigs of grass, maybe. And you could come in with your different colors. Strawberry finches. Those were fun to do. Scott and I were talking about, because we're trying to conserve money, we were talking about maybe do some um, wildflower photography and, I guess, videography. So we might pop some video up this weekend of us just um, going and seeing some of the, the flora. We see fauna, I guess we'd share that too. We don't really have anything in a kind of a tan kind of brown color. It's just doodling, doesn't have to be perfect. Scott and I once took this mushroom class at the zoo and wished it had been more in-depth because it was basically the same information he and I already knew. We were looking for, you know, someone to teach us on which ones won't kill you. You know what, this needs some more yellow up under here. And then we'll do a, some grass. Then we'll move on to the next one. But see, you could just take that little bit and turn it into a little um, ephemera piece. Hi, Tiffy. I told you I took it away. I told you that. You guys are bulking up so bad. Is it going to be really cold this winter? Okay, now you'll leave me alone for a little bit. And if you wanted, as you finish a square, put a border around it. So they'd end up looking like little stamps or stickers and then you could scan them in and you could shrink them and make them smaller and see if we could maybe darken these up a little here and there But no, I was getting back to the, I'm all over the place tonight. I'm like a space cadet. Sorry. That's just how my brain is working these days. Doodling is not supposed to be perfect. So we might, I don't know. Um, I have to see. We'll see what the weather is like. And um, see how Scott's knee is feeling. His left knee has been killing him. He's been moaning in his sleep because the way the blankets, I think, hurts. Or he moves and it hurts. But we might go up to the um, the display. Not display. What is it called? Oh, you can go up on this platform and you can stand in both North Carolina and South Carolina. Observation deck. And... Um, Um, let's see. But 
But yeah, that could be fun. And we'd be going up on a mountain, so we'd be able to see all the mountain flowers too. And if you make them squiggly lines and do it repeatedly, it looks like it's on purpose. I'll see how Scott's feeling. We might do that. We might go up to the observation deck. It's a lot of fun to go up there. I don't know if the fall colors will be in at all, but you could go check it out. If you come in and you add color and then you don't particularly think it's going the way you want, you can change it, add a different color, layer it up. I'm really surprised at how well these layer. And then if you want to bring your dimension back, just come back in with the, the Bic Crystal Pen and add some more doodly lines. It really does make kind of a difference. We'll just color these in and then I'll come back in with some Bic in a minute. But Dee Dee is right. It does get kind of a booger on the end that you have to wipe off constantly on those crystal pens. But they do right over just about everything. That's supposed to be a little bud. You wouldn't know it by looking at it, would you? Oh, Lisa has to go. Have a good night, Lisa. So then you can come back in and do your doodly lines with your pen. It doesn't have it can be scratchy, it can be beyond you're just doodling. What and when you doodle, you're just loosening up muscles that are asleep. Just think about it. You're exercising your muscles that don't get used very often. Because think about it, we type everything anymore. We don't we aren't using our hands like we used to. And I think it's important that we we train our hands that, hey, you used to work for me. Now you, 
You can, and you still can. You just have to wake it up. Wake up them hands. Okay, we want a yellow center on our flower. Oh, DJ's getting ready to go somewhere across the way. He always beeps. Beep, beep, beep. And see, just a squiggly doodly doo like that. And before you know it, you can make little other little marks in here to give this more texture. Instead of just looking like little circles, clean the tip off every once in a while. And then we'll put our, our border on it, and we'll just say that doodle is done. And on to the next one. Let's do a fish. It doesn't have to be a perfect fish. It can be a crazy fish. It's a doodle. See, that's a goofy fish. And give him some bubbles. And you doodled a fish. Yes. They're a Bic. Bic crystal... C-R-I-S-T-A-L, extra bold, writes with vividness and flair, bold and colorful lines. And I got the eight pack. I think I got them at Wally World before I quit going there again. And I'm just going to color these in really quick like... Because think about it, if you're doodling when you're on the phone or something, are you really thinking about it or are you listening to who's on the phone? Mine is just mindless doodling. Okay, now the bubbles, we could fill them in with blue. Maybe give him another couple bubbles here and there. Maybe make his, um, his fins a darker color. Do they have to be perfect little drawings? No, they're doodles. They have to be just something fun you're doing. Just pretend you're a kid. How how much thought do you think a kid puts in its doodles? None. You could go in and fill the, the, the scales in a little bit. Maybe his gills need a little bit extra color. Maybe you need to color the background in a little bit, just with some wispy lines. And we learned earlier that if you hit it before it dries, you can move it around a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Make it look like it's in water.
you have to be pretty quick because it does dry pretty quick, especially on this marker paper. One goofy looking fish. Beaky, you could charge all of us. <laughs> Hand therapy. Go back around his bubbles after you've added the color just to bring it back out. All of his bubbles. What else should we draw? What do y'all want to draw? Y'all give me something and I'll put it in a square. Oh, let's do, let's do a jack-o'-lantern or a pumpkin. That's nothing but a big circle that you break down into ovals. like that and then you come back in and you fix your ovals so they look more like a full-on pumpkin maybe bring out the center oval more there's an oval at the back too then add your stem in here fill in the top a little bit maybe the stems gonna be right at the line that's okay. Then we'll come in with our colors. Where's the oranges? A pumpkin, a butterfly. All right, we'll do the butterfly next. These blend so nice. I just can't get over the blending ability of these Crayola markers. Just makes it look so cool. Maybe add a little green to it. Oh, somebody's sending me a message. And if you wanted to, do a squiggly line for your your pumpkin vine. And the next was a butterfly. Let's see. I'm just going to do marker. Do a circle. And a circle. And another circle. Or oval, actually. Oval. And we'll just cover, color those in. Then give him a black body, circle for the head, oval for the body, antennae. And then if you wanted to, you could put some design in him.
give him a buzz trail. And then if you come back in with your pen and just, like I said, do squiggly lines and do multiples of them, it just, it adds some a little dimension. your block, give him a border, all right, a leaf, a fall leaf, or a green leaf, does it matter, I'll do this, The fun thing about doodling is you don't need a reference. You're just pulling from your own brain and making it up as you go along. Dang, Howard, I wish you couldn't knock like a human. You scared the daylights out of me. Yes, I hear you, bud. Just a minute. It's like you took my chipmunk. Not happy with you. Just a minute, Howard. Yep, I took it. All right, let's see. This is the darker of the two. So let's do an outline. And I'm not even being particular with these pen or markers because they blend so good and are so cheap. You can get a set of these for like $4 at Dollar General. I am so tickled with them. At first I was like, eh, it's just a Crayola. It's going to be really expensive and it's not. And they work really good. It's not perfect, but it's not supposed to be. Hi, Carlana. And anybody else I've missed while well, I've had my nose to paper. As Mary says, I might have to come out and see who's all here. I think the dog's going to get her two cents in next. I put her in her crate because she was acting like she wasn't going to settle down. 
put some spots where the bugs have been on them. There we go. Somebody's using a sander. Yep, it's a sander. Who's doing that, Howard? Who's using a sander at 9 o'clock at night? Sometimes I wish the cats could talk, but they can't. I think it's that guy that works out of his garage up the street. That'll be that'll be us and in, in uh, Casey. Scott will be out working in the garage after dark time. All right, what was after a leaf? Let me scroll back and see who else here. You like the pumpkin. I like the pumpkin too. Let me go back up here. A uh, scarecrow. A cornucopia. Woo. He's still looking for the chipmunk that I took away from him. I'm so mean. All right. Can't really see where the... Okay. So, let's see. All right, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, he needs some, it's not going to show up. Let's see, how can I do that so it'll show up? It'll have to be done with a pen. He's got some hair straw coming out of his hat.
give him some patches and things on his arms. So that'll be our scarecrow. Maybe give him some grass. Down here it is. So he looks like he's in a field of sorts. And back to the marker for the edge. That's supposed to be Janet's scarecrow. And somebody said a cornucopia. That's as good as it's going to get, I'm afraid. It's not a very good cornucopia. That one I would do better looking at one than to try to do it just as a doodle. But I'm trying to do stew doodles. been watching Betsy Doodle's vacation with the hubby. Looks like they're having fun. I try to get to Ann um, Annie Chambers on Mondays for her trivia game. I have fun with her trivia game. It's a lot of fun. And after she does the trivia... Um, she does, uh, I spy and everybody gets it. You know, when, if you decide, if you can figure out what their, their clue is, like they'll say, um, I spy in the living room, something that starts with L and then everybody will start guessing. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. Susan went to bed. All I have to do is get in the recliner. Once I'm sitting in the recliner, it's over with. There's something about the position of my head and everything in the recliner. Scott says he'll look over and I'll be zing away. This is going to be just an empty cornucopia. It's not full yet. Nobody's been harvesting. It looks like it should grow legs. And be a, come a bug. See, that's what doodling's about. You see something else, and you can turn it into it if you want to. Okay, I didn't see anything else. 
Thank you, Crafty Kitty. not looking square at it so it's all kind of screwy here I don't know if you all can tell what it is or not <laughs> supposed to be a porch swing. <laughs> I don't know if it looks like one or not. I don't know. Does it look like a porch swing or no? An old red Ford truck. Oh, good night, Cheryl. Sorry if I missed you saying night night. I got ink all over me, so I'm getting it everywhere. I don't know if that one looks like a porch swing or not.
my hand is filthy. It's just, I'm making a mess. I probably ought to go wash my hand. I don't know if this looks like an old Ford truck, but it's a red truck. <laughs> and doodles are supposed to be fun. Maybe they are fuzzy slippers. Making a mess here. I don't know if any of you would know what that is or not, but it's an apple press for apple cider. And then we can draw some apples right here. There we go. That was quick.
You like the box ideas? Keeps you focused. And it's only a little area. You know, it's only a little teeny spot you have to fill in with something. And you don't even have to color everything. You can just make little squiggly lines. Uh-oh, didn't mean to color that, that. That's okay. When I hit it with the gray, it's not going to matter anyway. So that's supposed to be the metal strap that goes around the outside of it. All right, and then we'll do some apples up here. Make one side a little bit darker than the others. Maybe put a little apple green still showing here and there. And then hit them with the red and see what happens. Don't knock that green right out. That's what it'll do. And then we'll put the border on it. And once you get started and you're just doodling, things will come to your mind. All right. Four more little squares. Thumbnail sketches. Yeah. But they're a little bit bigger than a thumbnail. <laughs> but they're fun so far. Oh, you thought at first it was an ice cream freezer. Let's do Thumbnails are, um, like Mary was saying, thumbnails are a really good way to come up with an idea for a plan even. If you just randomly, just quickly draw some short little sketches in a thumbnail, before you know it, you'll have a plan. And you can pick a th one thumbnail or a combination of several and um, have your project develop from that. Can make sure you can pretend this is coffee or hot chocolate, whichever you want to. Oh, this is the one I want, and we'll just write Happy Fall, y'all. You could take a tan color, do a little wisp coming up from it. And then if you wanted to bring all of it out, you can come back in with the, the big pen. Maybe go around the edge like that. Sketchy lines, sketchy lines.
I'm going over this with the um, ink because the paper is absorbing all that. Then if you wanted to, you could even put in some little indications of shadow over on this side. Make them curve so it it's, shows that it's going around a mug. There we go. You've been doodling with me? Cool. What should we do next? We got three more to go. Man, my hand is the filthiest it's been all day. <laughs> Let's see. A sunflower. That would be pretty. And I'll use brown for my outline. I just like to do the centers of the sunflowers. It's just a whole bunch of little circles. Squiggly paddles. Okay. Then in the center, I'll come back in with some light colors here and there. Scott ordered some things that uh, Home Depot you know, doesn't carry on the shelf because he says anybody that actually does anything has to order it and have it delivered because they don't stock anything that anybody would actually use. But um, he accidentally put it to go to the store on the other side of Greenville. So we picked up the stuff that some stuff that he ordered and had it delivered to the right place. And then we had an oopsie and had to drive all the way to the other side of town before he went to work today. Okay. I don't know if anybody watches Roots and Refuge Farm, but she planted a section of her garden that was done for the summer. She decided to turn into a zinnia and sunflower bed, and her husband was picking her a bouquet of flowers from there. She posted on um, Instagram. Ooh, Indian corn. That sounds like fun. We'll do that. kind of cheating with the markers but it's still fun to do I mean you could sketch all this stuff too with just just the the black pen and just have it be black and white drawings you don't have to add color I just had these out so I figured I'd use them
Now the Indian corn, I probably will sketch with the um, Bic pen before I add color because I think it would be easier to color it. So we'll do Indian corn and one more. And then I think I'm going to sign off for tonight because I know Mary's got to be tired and she's probably wanting to get up in the morning to do her, her regular time. So let's finish up this sunflower. And see, I like to use two or three shades or values in a, in a color to get the depth instead of just coloring it in solid. But you could just color it in solid if you wanted to. Sometimes it's when you bring the big pen back in that brings it to life. I'm going to go ahead and put the black border around this one. And sometimes make some skippy lines to make it look like the flower is actually coming out past the border. Like if you run into it, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, and then go back like that. And then it makes it look like the flower is coming at you out of the page. So the, I'm going to just come back in with my pen and go over just one side of these internal circles. Not, not go all the way around them. Just do it on one side because then it'll look like they've got some depth. And then just do your petals real sketchy. I go all the way around and do the first set of petals. And then I'll go around again and catch the ones that are in the background. can hear my third grade teacher move your whole arm not just your fingers did you, any of y'all hear that too no I wonder if they even care how a child writes I have to ask my sister about that because I know she said all the kids at her school were handed um, notebooks to do school if they were going to be at home. So see, that brings that out of the page. Janet just posted the link to the little ponies. If y'all missed the ponies, let me bring them back up real quick and let my hand rest. This is, this is Dawn. I'm going to send this to Let's Make a Mess, Dawn, because she said I was ignoring her and didn't say hello. And then this was the other little pony. This one we named Mystic. And then this one was my first pony that his name is Autumn. So I'll send that one to Dawn and uh, she'll have a little pony. So these were a lot of fun, but the pattern is the one that um, Janet just posted. If anybody else wants to make some ponies to send in happy mail or whatever. Um, what was the next? We were gonna do um, Indian corn. And then she's got Fabric Mart's um, Yeah, cursive writing, I don't think they teach that at all anymore. I think every child should still know how to write their name in, in cursive. So I'm just going to do a whole roll, row of ovals. And as I get to the other end of it, 
I'll start making them smaller and smaller. All right, and then I'll come back and I'll start making some more ovals next to the previous row and start going smaller sooner as the corn cob gets narrower. And right now I'm not real concerned about them being perfect. And then maybe angle these at the top just a little bit so it looks like they're going around the cob. And then make, maybe make some that are more circle-ish than ovals because you're on the top side of the... And then if you wanted, you could have like the husks come out like that. Like somebody's already opened it. That would be cool looking. Maybe have some over here in the back. Maybe give it a little stem. There we go. Now the fun part, getting to color, color it all in. So you'll color some red, some orange, some yellow, some brown, some speckled, some not. even have a couple that are the same color right next to each other. If you've ever looked at an ear of Indian corn, it's all different colors. So I'm going to set that one over here because I've already used it. Oh, yeah, and Bella Coca, and um, I think you put Family uh, Fabric Mar up there. And then um, the only other one that we talked about was Kate at the last homely, last, oh, ah, homely house. And that link is in the um, description box. I've already put that one in there. I love to watch Kate. She's just a joy to watch. And she has cats too. Did I miss any? Let's see. I think the rest of this, I'm just going to fill in around the colors with this brown here. Kind of a tan in between here.
and then maybe put some brown on the husk because it's usually dry by this point. Maybe a hint of a darker green. Norma wants candy corn. Okay, we'll do candy corn in the last one. That's not really quite dark enough. Let's come back with the brown over the green. There we go. I just, I can't recommend these hard enough. I just think the way they blend is amazing. For cheap markers, I think this would, if I was going to give a gift to somebody that was just wanting to get into crafting, I think a set of these super tip markers and some big crystal pens would have to be two things. That could be a nice list, Mary. What would you put in a beginning crafters kit if you were wanting to get them into crafting with you? These would be two things. And maybe some uh, glue all, Elmer's glue all. Candy corn, candy corn. I can't end with a Charlie Brown face. We're going to do candy corn. <coughs> if I have to choke on my own spit. Good grief. candy corn. Think of a short, fat rainbow in three colors. I needed to do something quick because I think Bernadette needs to go to the little girl's room, meaning outside. I think I'm going to wrap it up. Wouldn't that make a nice list? Mary's the queen of the list. Alright, so now if we could bring this out, we'll just do our sketchy lines around it. And then you could do maybe a little hashtag up here to show that it's a shiny. It's shiny. And then we'll put our border around it. I might scan this in and put it in uh, Fibsville or scan it in and shrink it. I might cut it in half or rip it in half right there so I can get get this in the, in the scanner because this is a huge piece of paper. But there you guys go. So we went from a little girl with a cat to a mushroom to a flower to a fish, and then we went all out fall. <laughs> so that's all the little doodles. And so don't be afraid to just doodle. I mean, there's really nothing to it. And you're not doing anything um, 
that's damaging anything. And um, the big pens are inexpensive. The, the Sharpie markers are inexpensive. Use the back of a piece of um, paper that didn't print right. Um, you know, you're only doodling. If you don't want to keep the doodles, you don't have to. But I tell you what, sometimes when I'm doodling, like on this drop cloth, when I get ready to pull this up, there might be something on this drop cloth that I really like a lot that I'll just cut a little square out and set it aside to add to a journal, um, maybe make a card with, or, you know, anything like that. So doodling is meant to be fun. Not hard work, not any rules. It's doodling. So just use whatever you have on hand. Oh, thanks, is it Cherry B? Welcome. You're new to me, I think. Of course, I'm horrible about the chat. I am. I will admit that. I am not very good at following chat during live, but I, I try to welcome everybody as they come in. There goes that moped up the road. So let me put these up real quick, and I'll put the bring the ponies back up so you guys can see the ponies we made at the beginning. It's 10 o'clock. I've been on for three hours. I'm starting to get a sore throat, so I think it's time for me to quit running my mouth. I just want to put these in here really quick. Um, if you have small children in your life, you could doodle a picture and let them color it. Kids love that kind of stuff. Let me bring this green paper up here because the ponies show up so much better on the green paper. And I will gift the Dawn Pony to Dawn at Let's Make a Mess. So let's put the ponies out here. I want to keep my first pony, most definitely. And like Mystic here was made with drop paper that I just glued to a piece of the cat food um, cardboard. So the patterns for the ponies come in different sizes. So you'll get, I guess, a small, medium, and a large pony. And you do have to add the hooves and eyes and stuff all on your own. It's not marked on the pattern. So anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And I hope somebody, somebody got something out of it and that y'all had fun. Thanks, Norma. All right, guys, y'all have a good night. Take care. Mary, get some sleep. I might catch you in the morning if I wake up at 6 a.m. again. And um, I'll see y'all later. Bye.